Hello and welcome. This will be how to do spatial econometrics models in Stata. Please make sure that you have watched the video for the lecture and also the example before we talk about the programs. Okay, so here I have opened up two windows. One of them is the do file editor with my Stata program. And here we have the program executed and the results just to save time. So before we start to talk about the program, please make sure that you have downloaded the Stata ADO file, Spatial Regression. Okay, so how to do that, if you come here onto the help and click on search, and then you do Spatial Regression, okay? And here you will get this window once you search, okay? So you can click on this and then click here to install. And it basically will see if you have these files already and I have the files already exist and they're up to date so nothing was done. But if you don't have this ado file, it will be stored on your computer. Okay, so now that we have downloaded the ado file, we can go ahead and use the data set. So for that, we will use a data set called uh, Spatial Columbus. It will be Columbus data. And in my case, it's located on my C drive in the folder econometric slash data. So please make sure you change this to where your data set is located. So after we go ahead and infile the data, I can open up uh, my data editor and I can look at the data. Uh, next thing I will uh, basically uh, define the variables. My Y variable would be crime, my X variables would be income and home values. So crime is my dependent variable and this is uh, uh, right here. Uh, home values would be um, here in the neighborhood and this will be the household income uh, for these neighborhoods as well. Okay, next if we scroll to the data, the data we would see the X coordinates and the Y coordinates. These are the physical coordinates for where these neighborhoods are located. And calling this X and Y was a bad idea because we typically call X and Y our independent and dependent variable. So it's a little bit confusing. So these are now uh, just X coordinates in Y coordinates. That would have been a better title for these, for these variables. So the next thing that I've defined is a band which mean, of 10, uh, which means that uh, beyond the distance of 10, uh, there will be no more spatial effects. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with the program. So when you use this program, all you need to change is change uh, the data set that you have, where it's located, put here the name of your Y variable, list all your X variables here, give the names of the X and Y coordinates, and this distance band, I will show you later on in the program how to determine that. So the first thing we do is describe the data, the Y list, the Y variable, and the X variables, and then summarize them. And here is with the description, we don't get anything more because there's no real label in that data set. And for the summary, uh, for crime, it's 35 is the average, for household income is 14, and for home values is 38. It would have helped if we knew how these are measured, but we don't, so that's okay. Um, next thing that we will do here is define the spatial weight matrix. And this is done with uh, spatial W matrix. Uh, this is the command that comes uh, from Stata. We would call it name W. And for X coordinate, I'm going to put how they're called in the data, X coordinate, which is X here for us. And Y coordinate would be this Y coordinate would be Y uh, in our case. The distance band would come from 0 to the value that I'm giving it here 10. So make sure you change this to something that would make sense for you. 
standardized meaning that there are row standardized and we talked about that in the lecture and then we have eigenvalues as well um, uh, calculated in here so if we look at the results here this is the spatial weight matrix uh, and it says the following matrices have been created we're using the inverse distance weight matrix and it's row standardized dimensions are 49 by 49 this is the number of observations this is the distance band that we calculated already uh, let's see the minimum distance is this and so on this is the maximum distance of 27 so the largest minimum distance is 3.37 37 and the smallest maximum distance is 14.51 so these are the maximum distances between um, the neighborhoods and this is the smallest of them so if I pick a distance band of 10 means that most of the neighborhoods would have neighbors if you want to make sure that all the neighborhoods have neighbors and all of them are neighbors of each other then put this distance band equal to 15 right here and then you'll make sure that everyone's got neighbors of, of everyone uh, and then we have the eigenvalues uh, matrix as well calculated we will use this later for the models okay so next thing that we're going to do is uh, calculate estimate a simple OLS regression reg uh, you put the x variable here y list for us that is crime and then you put the x list for us here is the income and home values when you execute that these would be um, the regression results right here you have uh, income has negative effect and home values have negative effect on crime rates uh, and I have put those results in the uh, example handout that I'm giving you next thing that we can do is uh, spatial diagnostics and for weights we would put this W matrix that we already calculated up here uh, so let's see what the outputs data gives us here. Uh, we would have, um, this is the fitted model for an OLS regression. This is the distance, uh, the weight matrix that we have calculated. And here is the Moran's eye test for the spatial error and spatial lag model. These are the test statistics that are calculated uh, as we discussed them in the lecture. And look basically at the p-values of they it's very small it's less than 0.05 therefore we have significant um, spatial effects and we do need to use uh, spatial models instead of uh, OLS model so next thing that we will do is we will calculate the spatial error model uh, and that is done with spatial regression you put your Y variable here in our case crime and you put the x variables here with spaces in between you have to give it the weights matrix w which is calculated before you have to give it the eigenvalues which are calculated before and you have to say that the model is error and these would be the results here we have distance based matrix the inverse distance that we're using from before we have 30, 49 observations um, again we have negative effects for income and home values so one interesting thing is that we have also estimated the lambda parameter here and um, this shows the spatial dependence and this is a significant effect the p-value is less than 0.05 uh, so we're justified in using the spatial error model the next thing that we can do is calculate the spatial lag model and everything is the same here if you look at this code except that here for model it says lag uh, otherwise it's identical to the code that you have above and again you have negative coefficients if you look at the estimations you have negative coefficients on income and home values and here we have the row as the the spatial lag coefficient and uh, this coefficient is also significant uh, as you can see here uh, so we are again justified in using a spatial lag model so again if you pick up this program and you want to use it just change the data file change your y and x give the coordinates pick up the band 
uh, just by looking at the spatial weight matrix and what is the distance, the minimum and the maximum distance, and then you're ready to go. It's going to run. Thank you for watching.